Alrighty guys, so I released a short film the other week called Wilderness and I shot it on the Canon C70 with the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses and well, it was a bit of an interesting experience. How's it going guys? My name is Andrew Murphy from Down Under in Gold Coast, Australia. So these are the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses and this is specifically the B set. Uh, and I borrowed them from a friend to test them out on my Canon C70, mainly just to see how they would actually perform and obviously to learn like the pros and cons of them before I actually use them on a the commercial, if a commercial came up where they ever wanted to shoot on an anamorphic lens. And to be honest, they definitely have some like amazing qualities about them, don't get me wrong, but they also have some drawbacks as well. So firstly, if you are new to anamorphic lenses, which I still am too, but basically they were designed back in the day to solve the issues of wanting to take like a four by three, almost square image from a 35 millimeter film and make it widescreen to be closer to kind of like what our eyes actually see. Now they could have just designed, I guess like a longer film stock, but obviously longer film stock means that it takes up more space and you wouldn't be able to film as much on the same roll. Uh, so it's actually a ton of work, but basically instead of doing that, they took uh, their optics and they made them oval to basically squeeze a widescreen image onto a four by three piece 35 millimeter film and then obviously afterwards I'll then de-squeeze it to get that widescreen aspect ratio. Now why this is a much better method is because you don't lose any resolution. Like if you were just to add black bars to the top and bottom, obviously all those pixels there are just gone. Now jumping forward to the 21st century and we still use anamorphic lenses quite a bit. And again, we just use them to maximize resolution. So if we wanna get that standard 235 widescreen aspect ratio, uh, we can use a anamorphic lens on say like a four by three or a full frame sensor. Or I guess if you're a DOP as well and you just wanna have that really nice anamorphic look, then you can use that as well. Now to actually pair these anamorphic lenses with my Canon C70, I had to get a PL to RF lens adapter because the anamorphic set that I borrowed had a PL mount on them. So this is the Photo Deox uh, RF2 PL mount adapter, which I found that actually works really good. It's super solid and locks in with the PL mount, which I think is really, really good. And it's not too expensive as well. Now, because the anamorphic lenses were quite heavy as well, I also added a lens support to my rig as well, just so there wasn't so much weight on just like the actual, uh, I guess, RF mount on the C70 itself. Because the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses by themselves weigh about two to three kilograms each, so they're extremely heavy for a lens. Now, one thing to note, because I did make this mistake when I first started ordering adapters, I originally ordered a PL to EF mount adapter because I was like, oh, I've got the Canon C200, which is an EF mount, and I've got the Canon C70, which is an RF mount, so I can potentially stack adapters and make it work. But unfortunately, the EF to PL mount only works with like five or six lenses, so it didn't actually work with the Atlas Orion anamorphics. So uh, yeah, if you're thinking about getting the EF to PL mount, don't get it doesn't really work. So definitely get a RF to e, a RF to PL adapter, too many friggin' acronyms. Uh, and this will work on the Canon C70. So now once we get this all set up, we can actually start shooting. And this is the image that comes out of the camera. And it looks weird as hell. And that is because we're looking at the squeezed image. And we can see just how these oval optics are actually working to fit the widescreen uh, wide aspect ratio onto a non-widescreen sense. Well, Kind of, because the Canon C70 is a super 35 mil sensor, which is actually kind of like a widescreen 16 by 9 mil sensor. Once you actually de-squeeze the image, we end up with this. So this is the first big problem if you're gonna use a two times anamorphic on the Canon C70. You're gonna get this really, really slim line aspect ratio and you lose a lot of resolution if you then crop it in to a 235. So the ideal anamorphic lens to use with a super 35 mil sensor is a 1.33 times because that's specifically designed to take a uh, 16 by nine sensor or sensor size and stretch it out to a 235 aspect ratio without losing any resolution. So keep this in mind if you are gonna use more than a 1.33 times anamorphic on a super 35 mil sensor. Now bear with me because there are a lot of numbers being thrown around and it can get overwhelming very quickly, but it actually is quite easy to understand once you actually grasp the basics of anamorphic lenses. So basically how it works is we just need to take the size of our sensor or the size of the image that our sensor can record at. So for my uh, camera, the Canon C70, it is 16 by nine. 
So we just need to take the height of the image, which is the nine, and we divide that by the squeeze factor, which for the Atlas Orion lenses is two. And after this, we end up with a 16 by four and a half aspect ratio. Uh, and then basically we divide this obviously down to make it a, a something by one, we end up with a 3.55 by one aspect ratio, which is why the image that you're seeing de-squeezed from the C70 is just ridiculous ridiculously wide. But then again, if we were to take this 16 by nine sensor and we use say a 1.33 times anamorphic, which is the one that you should be using on a super 35 mil sensor, we then get a 2.36 by one. So it's basically a 235 by one aspect ratio, which is that standard cinematic aspect ratio. So if you are looking at testing out some anamorphic lenses, then do some quick conversions to figure out what the actual final image will look like on the camera that you're actually wanting to use it on. So anyway, this is the de-squeezed image that we're left with, but to get a standard 235 by one cinematic widescreen ratio, we have to crop the edges of the frame, which is why these aren't particularly well suited for the Canon C70. Because the Canon C70 can only shoot in 4K, by the time we actually crop in the sides and make it a standard 235 aspect ratio, we get more like a 2.5K image, which is okay, like it's not great, but, uh, and that's basically why these two, uh, two times D, <laughs> too many numbers going around. This is why a two times squeeze anamorphic lens is more made for when you have like a full frame sensor that can shoot open gates. It's made for a four by three sensor. So a big thing that differentiates anamorphic lenses from spherical lenses, apart from obviously the look, is that the focal lengths have different characteristics to them as well. So for example, a 50 millimeter spherical lens has good compression and makes people look normal, I guess. But the downside is that it is quite tight, so we can't get much in the frame. Now, if we were to use a 50 millimeter anamorphic lens, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So on the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses, which are a two times squeeze anamorphic, the 50 millimeter lens will give you the compression and the depth of field of a 50 millimeter lens, but it will give you the width of a 25 millimeter lens. And again, this took me a while to get my head around, but again, this is another reason why you'd want to use anamorphic lenses over spherical lenses. Now there is no doubt that the final look is absolutely beautiful and it really does take away that kind of like digital look to the image, but actually shooting with them is a very interesting experience. The main issue that I found was actually just focusing with these lenses. And although the Canon C70 does have a de-squeeze function in the camera built in, I found that shooting wide open to get the maximum bokeh and the maximum light into my sensor uh, made the camera's peaking functionality basically completely useless. Now I'm not sure if that's just because it can only shoot 4K and there's just not enough resolution for the peaking to work or it just couldn't really understand what was going on. But basically this is exactly why I wanted to actually do a test shoot with these lenses before I shot with them on a commercial, basically to figure out what the aperture and the sharpest image and all that kind of stuff is with my particular camera. Because imagine if I actually was like, let's go shoot a commercial with these lenses. And then I take it back and I realize that all the images are really soft and half of them are out of focus and it would just be a freaking nightmare. So keeping this in mind, that is the reason why a lot of the short film is potentially out of focus because I just couldn't really see what was in focus. And I had like basically no assistance from the gear that I was using because the, the peaking just wasn't working. Like it just wasn't picking up the edges very well. However, I did notice that when it was in focus, it was very sharp. Uh, but if I was to actually use these lenses on a commercial, I definitely wouldn't stop it down to T2.1 on the Canon C70. I'd probably shoot it like T3.2, maybe T4, uh, just to get the sharpest image possible on the sensor that I, that I was actually using it on. Oh, and of course, I don't even know why I left this to the end. We cannot forget the lens flares as well. Like, I actually forgot when I was shooting that anamorphic lens flares were just like crazy wild. Like, and I only realized when I pointed it at the camera and I saw them come up and it just like lit up the screen with this amazing blue anamorphic lens flare. Fell in love with the lenses straight away from that point onwards. I do have to say though that the lens flares on the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses are pretty wild. I can, I can see why people wouldn't want to use the lenses when they're shooting particular things because it can just be 
a little bit too much, but I can now see why people don't like using Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses, specifically because of that crazy lens flare. And honestly, I'd say that that would be one of the deciding factors for if you wanted to use them or not. Like if you know that you're gonna have backlighting on your subjects in the actual commercial or whatever the shoot is, and you don't want lens flares, then it immediately rules out the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses because the, there's no in between. It's just you either have the lens flares or you use a different lens and you have whatever the lens flares are on that lens. Another thing is that wide open at T2.1, the chromatic aberration on my sensor anyway was very noticeable. Uh, now we did shoot in extremely difficult lighting conditions, but I was expecting more considering the set is like 28,000 US dollars for three lenses. And also the bokeh wide open wasn't completely oval like on the edges, which again is something that I would expect if you're paying this much for these lenses. But again, like these are the first anamorphic lenses that I've used. I don't know if this is, like obviously, apparently for anamorphic lenses, these are quite cheap. So I don't know, maybe this is kind of like comparing to a budget spherical lens for like a few hundred dollars. Or to, it's a completely new field for me. But honestly, even though there are some downsides to using these lenses on the Canon C70, I would like 100% shoot on them again for a project. I obviously just have to wait for the right project to come up. But just like the organic look that they give the image and that like kind of like swirliness in the bokeh, it's just something that you can't replicate with many other lenses. But I have actually tested out these anamorphic lenses. I'd be more interested to test out, say, like uh, the Surrey or the Vazen anamorphics because obviously they're slightly different. Like um, Surrey's just brought out a 1.6 times, Vazen has a 1.8 times, so just not as much uh, squeezingness. Uh, to your image, so yeah, be interesting to test those out in the future. Anyway guys, if you did enjoy this one, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel. If you want to find out more about these lenses, I'll leave some links down below. If you want to check out this short film, then I'll leave that link down below as well. Otherwise, stay creative and just be you. Have fun.